Okay, so we are going to be talking about perimeter and area of rectangles, squares, triangles, and circles. Um, we've already finished page 17, and we did page 18 in class today. So what we are going to do um, for our notes video is go over numbers 11 and 12 in your notes, and that is on page 19 in your workbooks. Okay, so we're going to go over page, or, I'm sorry, numbers 11 and 12. Um, because the rest of the um, examples, we are actually going to be doing most of those in class. So like I said, we're just going to go over number 11 and 12 on page 19 in your workbooks. Okay, so number 11 says, given the area of a triangle is 15 square units, if the base of the triangle is 10 units, what is the height of the triangle and the perimeter? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, draw a triangle. Okay. And we should know by now that the base and the height of our triangle need to be perpendicular. So that means that they have to form a 90 degree angle. Okay. Um, we t It tells us in the directions that the base of the triangle is 10. So I'm going to draw the base of my triangle being 10 units. And then it says, well, what is the height? Okay, so we're going to have to find that height. <clears throat> in order to find that height, we have to use the information it told us at the very beginning that the area of a triangle is 15 square units. So we know that the area of a triangle, the formula for that is one half base times height. Okay. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put in the information that we know. We know it told us that the area is 15 square units. Okay, so we have 15 in for area. The one half does not change ever. Okay, that's just part of the formula. The base it told us was 10. And the height is what we are trying to find. So I'm going to leave that as H. That's what we're going to find. So... I'm just going to go ahead and simplify, and I'm going to say, well, 15 is equal to 1 half of 10 is 5, and then we still have that H there, so we have 5H. Now, if, that, um, if we were solving any other equation, what we would do at this point is go ahead and we would divide by 5 on both sides in order to get H by itself. So 15 divided by 5 gives me 3. And my fives cancel out on the other side and I'm left with H, which means that my height is three. Okay, now at this point, um, it wants us to also find the perimeter. And in order to find the perimeter, we need to have all sides of our triangle. So I'm gonna label that side X. Now at this point, we should look at this triangle and we should say, okay, well, I have a right triangle. How can I find a missing side length on a right triangle? And we should know that we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, well, across from the 90 is going to be my hypotenuse, which makes 10 and 3 my legs of my right triangle. So I'm going to plug that into my... Um, Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to say a leg squared plus another leg squared is equal to my hypotenuse, which we called x squared. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So then I have 3 squared is 9, 10 squared is 100, and that's equal to x squared. And if we add, we have 109 is equal to x squared. And with this, we then have to take the square root on both sides, which cancel out, and we get x is equal to the square root of 109. And I believe that does not simplify. So that means that x is equal to the square root of 109. So, we know that perimeter is adding all of our sides together. So we're going to look at the 3u, the 10u, 
and the square root of 109. And we are going to add all of those together. So we're going to say 3 plus 10 plus the square root of 109. Now it doesn't specify, but I'm going to leave mine in simplest radical form. So I can combine the 3 and the 10, but I cannot combine the, one, the square root of 109. So I'm going to say 3 and 10 gives me 13 plus the square root of 109. And that's actually going to be my final answer. And since we're talking about perimeter, we're just going to say that means we have units, not units squared. Um, because if we said units squared, we'd be talking about area. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and let's move on to example 12. Um, it says, given the hypotenuse of an isosceles right triangle. Well, the first thing we need to know is what isosceles means. So isosceles means that we have two congruent sides. Okay, which means that those sides are equal. So if I draw my right triangle, oops. Okay, that means that my legs must be congruent. They have to be equal. So it says the hypotenuse is 10 root 2. So I'm going to label that with an H because that's my hypotenuse, which means my X's are my legs. All right. The reason that we need to find what those X's are is because we need to find the area of our triangle. And in order to find the area, we have to have the base and the height, the, the um, two that form that 90 degree angle because they must be perpendicular. So we need to find what these are so we can multiply those together and take half of that in order to find the area. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem to find x and see what that is. So we have x squared plus x squared is equal to 10 root 2 squared. Okay, if we combine our like terms, we have x squared plus x squared, which gives me 2x squared. And then off to the side, I'm going to show you, you can definitely put that in your calculator to the 10 root 2 squared, um, but please make sure that you have those parentheses, otherwise you are not going to get the correct answer. So we're going to do the, the work off to the side. We have 10 root 2 times 10 root 2. First, you have to take the outsides and multiply. 10 times 10 gives me 100. Then you take the insides and you multiply those. So 2 times 2 gives me 4. 4 is a perfect square, so that means that the square root of 4 is 2. So 100 times 2 gives me 200. So I have 2x squared equals 200. Now from here, I have to divide that 2 away before I can take the square root. So I'm going to say x squared is then equal to 100. Now we can go ahead and we can take that square root. So if we take the square root, we get x is equal to the square root of 100, which is this 10 which means that each of our x's are equal to 10. <clears throat> so if I want to find the area now of this particular triangle, I have to use 1 half base times height. And we can tell now that our base here is 10 And our height is also 10. Okay. So I'm going to take the 10 times the 10 first, and that gives me 100. And then I can say, okay, well, now I want to take half of that 100. And half of 100 is 50, which means that our area here is 50 
Um, we're talking about meters, so we're going to say meters squared. Anytime we're talking about area, we have our units and then our squared. Okay. All right, that is all the examples we're going to go over for today. Um, tomorrow, we're going to go through examples 13 through 17 in class. Um, but that is all we're going to go 